Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'm going to talk about proofs and what it means to produce a proof and the kind of language and the steps involved in producing proofs. And I'm going to consider the very first uh, so-called proof of contradiction by Euclid in his Book of Elements. So let's begin. Now, <clears throat> the uh, proposition 1.6 of Book 1 is uh, the one that states, if two angles of a triangle are equal, then their bases are equal. Okay, so... Um, in other words, if this angle here is equal to this blue angle, then these sides are equal because uh, an angle such as this one, this blue one, is subtended on this base, AC, and this angle here, this blue angle here, is subtended on the base AB. Okay, now, uh, what is already known is that angles subtended on the same base are equal. And this uh, proof is, the proof of this fact is easy to show by positioning the vertex of these angles, in other words, this vertex and this vertex, at the center of a circle and observing that the same arc obviously implies the same base, right? So for example, if we do that, if this is the arc, then then this angle here rests on this base, okay? So if, for example, we have this other angle here, this other red angle, um, then it's got a different base. This is the base here, but in order to be equal to the other angle, it must have the same base, right? Okay, so now using this fact alone, it is easy to prove Proposition 6 of Book 1 but Euclid uses a proof called reductio ad absurdum, or that which is required to show, okay? And in Greek, the phrase for that is oper edi dixe. So that occurs frequently in the elements. Now, um, I'll show you later on that this proof wasn't even necessary because uh, using proposition 4, which is just one proposition earlier. In other words, uh, just let me close that there. Come on. Uh, proposition 4 says that if two triangles have two sides equal to two sides, respectively, as you see in the, this diagram here, um, and have the angles enclosed by equal straight lines, then they will have the same base equal to the base. Okay, so in other words, this already tells you uh, that a triangle with two equal angles will have two sides which are the same. So now uh, we can look at the proof, and the proof simply says this. It says... Uh, I say that AB, this line AB, is equal to AC. Now, I don't, if we use the, the word assume, it doesn't mean we're assuming it's true. We're assuming that it is the case without proof, okay? So assume means uh, that we are letting it be the case without proof. We don't actually know whether it's true or not. And... If not, then let DB, this line here, this, this DB line here, uh, let it uh, be equal to AC. Let this line here be equal to AC. And it doesn't matter which DB you choose. And then, then we know that DB is equal to DC, right? Because now we are saying that this line is not equal to this line, given these two uh, blue angles are equal but rather db is equal to ac so the two sides db and bc are equal to the two sides ac 
and CB respectively, right? So this is the case because we're assuming that DB is equal to DC. And therefore the angle, well, it's given the angle DBC, this blue angle is equal to the angle ACB. So thus the base DC, this base, as I explained to you earlier, this base of the blue angle is equal to base AB of this blue angle, right? And the conclusion is that the triangle DBC, the smaller triangle, will be equal to the larger triangle, the lesser to the greater, which is absurd. Okay, so therefore the assumption that AB is uh, not equal to A. C, this AB is not equal to AC, is false, okay? So, therefore, if it's false, it means that AC is equal to AB, right? So, this is a simple proof. And now, Euclid uses Proposition 4 in his proof, and this is this requirement 1, which I'm talking about, all right? In other words, uh, the requirement that triangles which have two equal sides have the same base right so the ancient greeks defined all angles in terms of right angles and this approach was favored above the other approach that angle vertices should be located at some circle center in which case the proof is immediately evident and reductio ad absurdum ad absurdum is an unnecessary method so euclid really just didn't have to do this if he had defined, if he had uh, used the fact that repositioning the angles with their vertices at the origin would have been easy to show that uh, them, the, the same angle must have the same base. And hence, a triangle with two equal angles must have two equal sides. So, uh, there wouldn't have been a need to relate these two triangles in terms of size. Now, remember, this is what Euclid really proved in directly in this uh, proposition, is he showed that uh, there's an absurdity because a smaller triangle can't have the same area as a larger triangle. In other words, triangle DBC can't have the same area as ABC. And this proof is often called the first contradiction proof, but the contradiction is in terms of the area and not directly related to uh, AB to AB equal to AC. Okay. So uh, now this, this might all be purportedly simple according to mainstream academics, but you'll be surprised uh, when you talk to these so-called educated fools that they don't understand most of these things and uh, especially on that forum sci.math when you talk to them about logic uh, none of them have a clue what logic is all about so they'll uh, you know begin to talk about uh, deductive reasoning for example if then in terms of propositional logic but in mathematics if then has nothing to do with propositional logic because if x then y means that y depends on the value of x okay so that means if x is true then y is true that is what deductive reasoning means in mathematics so you can't for example say if uh, the sky is blue then it's raining okay you can't say that that's just nonsense right and you can't say uh, if the moon is made of cheese then i am rich there's there has to be a relation between the proposition x and y in mathematics that's basically how you complete deductive proofs so it has nothing to do with propositional logic but there is this incredibly stupid moron on Sci.Math who is the poster boy of mainstream mathematics, a guy called Zealous Malum who claims to have a master's degree from Sweden. But if you read the comments uh, in 
the discussions I've had with him, which I'll no longer have because he can't be helped, you'll see uh, the kind of mindset and mentality that is nurtured by the baboons in the big stupid. It's actually kind of sad because it doesn't matter how much you try to correct these people and show them their ways are wrong. They simply will not change. And to me, nothing <laughs> spells crank more than that. Uh, it's quite ironic that they call everybody outside their, their church of academia cranks when they indeed are the biggest cranks. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little video. I usually don't have the energy to produce videos, but today I'm feeling a little bit better. So, and I think this is an important video. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Download my free book, which is the most important mathematics book I've written. I'll place a link to it in the details section. Tell your friends about the channel and share the knowledge that I have revealed to you in this video. Um, I'm John Gabriel, the discoverer of the first and only rigorous formulation of calculus in human history. And this is the new Calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.